Hi guys, welcome, welcome. There we go. All right, I've just made Annika co-host so she can help let me let people in. So here we go. Good evening, good evening, good evening. All right, so I think we're on record. Yep, yeah, we're on record. So there we go. And I'll just ask Annika if you can keep an eye on letting people in and just checking that everyone is muted. That will be great. Welcome guys to our sleep workshop. My name is Nina, Nina Sachs for those of you who haven't met me yet and it is good to see so many of you here joining in. Um, let me just help admit some people and um, while we just um, allow the rest to, to join in, for those of you who don't know me, I am a yoga teacher. I've got a yoga studio in Takai, and I've got a lovely group of teachers who are teaching there for me because I'm currently living in Mozambique. I am a yoga teacher trainer as well. I've done a yoga magazine. I'm busy with some podcasts with a friend. So pretty much in the world of, of, of yoga, Ayurveda, um, yoga therapy a little, I suppose, and farm life. So that is me in a, a nutshell. I've just embarked on a yoga health coaching course and putting together workshops is pretty much one of the um, part of the course that we have to do so that we can just really share what it is that we're learning, what we're doing and um, help a whole load of uh, other people just gain a bit more insight. So a lot of what I have to share with you is in the background of Ayurveda. So pretty much why we are all here, <laughs> at least why I hope we're all here, is so that we can get better sleep. So the idea of this workshop came to me because when I sent a survey out to, to um, a lot of my students, I thought, well, let me find out how everyone's sleep is. And sleep literally is, uh, let me let Carter out. The yoga dog does not want to be part of this talk. Come on, yoga dog, out you go. Nice and slow, nothing can be part him. So sleep really came back as one of the, the biggest uh, issues, problems, struggles people were having and I found it quite funny because for me it's, it's, it's not a, a massive one but I do understand and I do know that when um, we struggle with sleep it really impacts our whole life. So the idea of this talk is that I'll, we'll give a, I'll give a little intro and then we'll cover three steps that can, can help you um taking a look at it from an ayurvedic standpoint we'll do a breathing practice and a yoga nidra and i'll send you a link to a yoga nidra you can have to help you fall asleep um, at the end so that is pretty much how how today's how this evening session will go you are welcome to be in whatever part of your house you are in and um, yeah, whoever's able to join is able to join. I see there's some, um, some people have their pets around and things, so fabulous. Um, when it comes to sleep, as so many of my students mentioned, it is, it is a massive, massive issue. And um, the NHS says, I'll read it here, that regular poor sleep Put you at risk of serious medical conditions, including including obesity, heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes, and shortens your life expectancy. Fabulous. <laughs> so, um, with that said, you know we've all experienced the occasional bad night's sleep, and we wake up feeling uh, groggy, heavy, lethargic, you know, a little tired, and. Um, when when that goes on regularly then we um 
you know, it, re it really does impact our, our life and our health. So again, what the NHS says is that after several sleepless nights, the mental effects become more serious. Your brain will fog, making it difficult to concentrate and make decisions. You'll start to feel down and may fall asleep during the day. Your risk of injury and accidents at home, work and on the road also increases. So obviously none of us want to be in, in that state regularly. So I thought let's make this a little interactive and let's, um, I'm going to throw in a little poll. I've launched a little poll and you can all answer that. And pretty much it's just on average, how many nights a week do you think you're sleeping well and waking up well rested? So would it be none of the time? In other words, you can't remember the last time you slept well, maybe once or twice a week, maybe half the time, maybe nearly every night you're sleeping well. So on average, how many nights a week do you think you're sleeping well? So there's a little poll that you can um, go in and it'll just give me an idea as to where everyone is and how severe our sleep issues for for the group this evening is so uh, let's see we have got about most of you are saying half the time and there are a few who are saying that maybe one to two times a week you're only getting good sleep most of you half the time so that would be about maybe three or four out of our nights out of the week so that's pretty insightful at least not at least we're not um <laughs> struggling with complete sleep um problems where you're not able to sleep at all so half the time that is doable in the sense that we can work with that this evening cool so i'm going to i think in that poll and then while we add it Oh, I can actually share the results. Here you go. I think you should be able to see those, hopefully. I'm not sure. Anyway. And oh, you can review. Cool. <laughs> and then I had another poll, but I'm just not sure how to get there. One second. Here we go. And then there's, oh, where am I now? <laughs> And then there's one more question I had. Let's see. There we go. I'm going to launch another one. Here you go. How much do you think not sleeping or not sleeping well is affecting you? So is it more than you'd like to affect? Is it not too dramatically? Or do you think it's seriously impacting your life, your work life and all your personal life? <laughs> All right, see there's some quick answers coming through. It's like a firing squad. Awesome. Um, so when we when I'm saying that, you know, um, all right, let's just see what's coming in because that'll also give some good insight. So we probably that's quite interesting. It's quite even. I'll give you another minute or two to to throw in your thoughts more than you'd like to admit, admit, not too dramatically, seriously impacting your life. For those who are saying that it's not too dramatically, is that because um, poor sleep is something recent, maybe? You can always add it in the chat, then I can read up. Or is it just pretty much becoming a coping mechanism? Uh, Cool. All right, so we're pretty much even between those three. I'll share the results again so you can have a quick squiz. You can see. Um, and while you're having a look at that, so with this talk, I mean, it's ideally for those of you who are wanting to just gain a little bit more of an insight into to sleep and what maybe what changes um, could be made while willing to hear also <laughs> the truth about sleep and um, you know willing to maybe learn something new 
So we've got that it's some menopause issues, some sleeping pills. Um, yep, yeah, that can definitely impact your ability to focus. So we'll close that again. There we go. I think that's all gone. Um, all right, and being retired, it's impacted your life a little less. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. So, though, yeah, for those of you who are here, that's pretty much what we'll be, be looking at. We'll take an Ayurvedic standpoint on that. And um, I'm not going to be able to give you kind of a, a quick fix or a pull or a solution um, to, to that's going to work like that. Um, if, if you're wanting some herbal remedies, I, I cannot do that for you here. So, so that, um, I, yeah, then please don't watch any further. But yeah, for those who are here, we are going to have a look in a moment as to, to how we can maybe adapt a little, a few tiny little things in our lifestyle to, to make it easier for us to maybe just get a little bit more sleep. Um, stress, massive one there, Azina, yeah, the, the less, the more stressed you are, the less sleep comes in, definitely. So uh, depending on, I suppose, what's happening in work and life, the more stressed, the more agitated we are, the, the less sleep we get. And um, that's definitely where our little breathing practice, I think, will hopefully come in. It's definitely been something that's been helping me. So again, when like stress is such a, a, a massive one, I'm glad you both brought that up now because you know, when we end up having uh, increased periods of stress in our life and um, that affects our whole hormone balance. I mean, we all know it with being bringing up kids or working and, and there's just stress in the life. Everything goes a little bit wonky. And then as soon as your sleep is disrupted, again, like we were talking about, the diabetes can kick in, the heart disease can kick in, the obesity, the this, the that, the next. And when you start getting one or two or more of those issues coming in, then it really starts um, causing major havoc with your, with your health and your lifestyle. And that can then impact everything from, from, from your personal life to um, your, your sex life with your partner, your relationship with your kids, your family, you end up being snappy and moody and grumpy. The same can transfer onto your work life. And then if you're lacking sleep, you can be, you might be less focused, less um, creative, slow at problem solving. And then if you're struggling at work, it means you can't get a promotion and, 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 and. Um, and uh, it seems to be such a, a, a mean, terrible cycle that we then sometimes get ourselves into. So with me, like I was saying, I'm, I'm lucky <laughs> that at the, at the moment I really don't struggle too much with um, sleep disorder or stress. I do struggle when I have a really bad month with PMS, that I will admit. Then. Then I struggle through the evenings, I struggle with my sleep, and then everything also goes haywire. Then I start eating the junk food, then I start having cravings, um, start getting moody, then it affects everyone else in the family, it affects my work, it affects my uh, exercise ability. I don't want to get up in the morning, don't want to exercise. If I don't exercise, then I don't feel flexible, don't feel healthy, don't feel well. Um, and it's nothing new. You guys all know this. You probably um, experienced the same. And um, I suppose the only other time that I really struggled with sleep was the days when I was doing my yoga magazine. When, for those of you who remember me and way back then in those years when I was doing that. Um, and then, then coming kind of out of that where there was a little bit of depression, a little bit of self-worth issues coming in, questioning about, you know, where I should be, what I should be doing. And I really needed to just take kind of like a year or two off and pretty much sleep. Um, and luckily I have had a family, have a family that could allow me to do that. Um, but I wish I would have known about 
Ayurveda a little bit earlier because it would have made life a lot easier. So living on the farm and being here for two years, it really throws you into rhythm with nature and how to um, be in tune with nature. And I'd heard of Ayurveda when I did my yoga teacher training course, and it all seemed too technical, too intense, too, too hectic, too crazy. And I'm sure many of you who have come across that have maybe experienced the same. And when I kind of just broke it down really, really simply, and I thought about the fundamentals, the base of it, it's really just got to do with rhythm, with the cycles of nature, and, and being in tune with nature and listening to the energies. And when we can start to connect with that, it's amazing. <laughs> Life gets so, so much easier. So I thought that would just, um, I thought I'd just share my little story with you in the meantime, um, just so that kind of you get an idea that, you know, I, I have been there. I've been in a you know place in a time where I've felt stuck and, and it is, possible to kind of come out of it and move through it and, and get into a better sleep hygiene story. So with that said, I also know that any changes that I have made or needed to make have had to be, um, I've had to make changes, but they've had to be fun because if something's not fun, then I'm seriously not interested in doing it. It has to be easy and it has to be fun because if it's not, then um, I'm, I'm a bit of a rebel and I'll rebel and I won't do it. So I'll introduce you to some theory and then to a few fun and easy action steps that uh, can you can try and start to implement. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much my little intro, having a look at my notes. So what we're going to start with in the first part of our little talk is my first tip for you. And my first tip for you today is a breathing practice, which we'll do together. And I like to do this breathing practice if I'm feeling a little anxious. It's one that I do if I'm stressed and I'm struggling to get to sleep at night. And it's something that I'll do when I wake up in the middle of the night. So if, if Craig's been up and about or there's been a noise if a car alarm's gone off or I've just woken up, then I'll usually try, not always, but I'll try to do this, this breathing practice. And it really just helps to down regulate a lot. What I've also been doing recently, actually just this past week, is I've put a timer on my phone for a minute at about half past 12. So half past 12 every day I'll sit down, I'll put a one minute timer and I'll, I'll just do this breathing practice just so that during the day I get to calm a little because as you can tell <laughs> I can get a little excited sometimes. So this practice will be a really good start for, for me and hopefully all of you. Now you can be wherever you want to be. You actually don't need to see the screen for this because you're going to be breathing. So if you are in your lounge, if you're on your couch, lie back on your couch. If you're on a yoga mat, lie on your yoga mat. If you're in your bedroom, go lie in your bed. As long as you can hear me, it's fine. You really don't need to see me because there's nothing to see. Um, but you want to try and get yourself into a position that you would be in when you would actually be doing this practice. And if you're busy cooking or busy, then that's fine. Just listen and kind of participate. And if you are sitting, then make sure you're sitting comfortably. Right. So, uh, exactly. This is called, I call this the one, two breathing practice, where we're going to start lengthening our exhalation so that our exhalation is longer than the inhalation. And this is what just helps to downregulate the, the nervous system a little. All right. So starting off, sitting or lying in any comfortable position, wherever you happen to be. And that is the, the main thing. You need to be comfortable. So if lying with your legs straight is uncomfortable, then just bend your knees and place the soles of your feet on the mat. 
or the bed or the ground or the couch or wherever you're at. And close your eyes and maybe place one a hand, one of your hands, a hand or two on your abdomen. And just become aware of the movement of the belly. So as you inhale, notice how your abdomen rises. And as you exhale, notice how the abdomen falls. And if it's not doing that actively, just try and initiate that movement. So as you inhale, allow your belly to rise. And as you exhale, maybe just very gently contract the abdomen so the belly falls. So mentally count the length of your inhalations as you inhale. As you inhale, just maybe counting one, two, three, maybe four. And then do the same with your exhalations. Count the length of your exhalation. One, two, three, maybe four. And each time you breathe, you're just mentally counting the length of your inhalations and the length of your exhalations. If your inhalation is longer than your exhalation, see if you can make them the same length. And do this by either making your inhalation a little shorter or making your exhalation just a little longer. And you keep counting and you just bring yourself so that you're in a state of balance. So if your inhalation is longer than your exhalation, try and bring them so that they're even. And you take as long as you need to, to get into this comfortable position, this space. But once your inhalation and your exhalation are equal, very, very slowly, very gradually, you're going to start to lengthen your exhalation by one count. So if you're inhaling to a count of four, you're going to see if you can now exhale to a count of five. Make sure that the breath, both on the inhalation and the exhalation, feels smooth and relaxed. And then as you sink into that smooth, relaxed state, you can always increase the length of your exhalation by another count. So the inhalation generally stays the same and the exhalation may just increase by a count. And make sure you experience absolutely no strain in that exhalation. Or as you start to increase that exhalation, I should be saying. So there should be absolutely no strain as you start increasing the exhalation and you want to work towards a ratio of one is to two. So if you're inhaling for four, you want to eventually work up towards exhaling to eight. You don't want to go past eight, um, you just want to go towards that. Also remember that even if your exhalation is only slightly longer than your inhalation, this will already induce a nice calming effect. If you push yourself beyond what is comfortable, and for those who've got that A-type personality or want to be a perfectionist or want to be the teacher's pet and want to get this 100% right from the get-go, if you strain your breath, or your mind or your body in any way, you're going to activate your, um, your sympathetic nervous system, your stress response, and you're going to pretty much induce <laughs> the opposite effect of calming and relaxing. So you really, and this was hard for me to learn and it is hard for me to do because I, I want to do the one, two, because it says one, two ratio, but you want to build up to it comfortably, slowly. You don't want to go past it, you want to make sure that it is easeful and smooth. All right, so let's do one or two more rounds together. And ideally you want to allow the breath to be in through the nose and out through the nose. But again, if there's congestion in your nose, then you just do very light breathing in and out through the mouth. 
So you adapt it so that it's working for you. And then after that last round, just allow a natural breath to return. You can then rub the palms of your hands together. You can cup them over your eyes. And then slowly blink your eyes, moving your hands away. Maybe look down towards the ground or up towards the ceiling first. Just allowing your eyes to get used to the light again. And when you're ready, you can come back to the screen if you want. There we go. Well done. All right. So that was my first little tip for you this evening. Um, if you have any thoughts or experiences, you're welcome to just type that in the, the chat so that I can see that for now. We can always um, address that in a little while. Um, for most of you, it's probably not a practice that is too uncommon or it's probably something that you're very familiar with. But sometimes we just need to be reminded of it and reminded that we can use it more simply than how we often do. Um, to, to just lie quietly in our beds and to focus, I count in the inhalation, exhalation. We know what the goal is, where we want to get to, but we're not pushing to it. We're allowing it to happen very, very naturally. Um, so I invite you this, this week to maybe practice this a little, maybe before going to sleep, if you're struggling to sleep, especially if there's a bit of stress or anxiety um, in your day. And if you are waking up at night, see if you can do this as well. One of the other tips that I learned from my mom, for those of you who are night waker uppers, is to always have a little notepad or a paper and pen next to your bed. So if you do wake up in the middle of the night, you think, ah, oh, I need to add dog food to my shopping list. And ah, oh, I need to make sure I phone that person. You just literally in the dark, you make a little scribble note for yourself. Because as soon as you get the, the thought onto paper, you can release it and that can help you get to sleep. So that is um, another little tip I have for you. Great. All right, so that was a little practice I thought I'd share with you that I find very useful. And what I want to get to now is maybe a little bit more into the Ayurveda side of things. Um, and let's see how this is going to, if this is going to work. All right. Can everyone see? And okay, you might have said that. I put this down here. Whoa. All right. But now everything is in reverse. Is my camera looking? Does my camera look in reverse to you? My whiteboard. Are my numbers all back to front? Maybe just give me a nod or a no. It's looking good or it's not looking good it's looking good okay cool <laughs> just the reverse for me fabulous all right so what we'll start here most of you may have seen this before is a clock i'm sure actually all of you have seen a clock face before what i mean is the ayurveda clock so we've got kind of 10 10 a.m 10 p.m 2 a.m 2 p.m 6 a.m 6 p.m so what we'll do is we'll start over here at 10. Let's start with 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., which is kind of um, the, the busy time of day. This is, in Ayurveda, what we call the, I don't know, I hope you can, if you can't really see, it's not the end of the world, um, the pitta time of day, I've got a nice little big sun here, I don't know if you can see that, but that is when the sun is at its highest, pretty much at, at around 12 o'clock. And pitta time of day in Ayurveda is when we have, when our body creates bile. So that is when we've got the most kind of digestive fire ability in our physiology and um, that's why in Ayurveda 
we generally want to have our biggest meal at kind of midday, between kind of 12 and 2, somewhere at lunchtime, because this gives the Agni, the fire within you, the rest of the day to kind of break up um, and digest the, the food so that it can be absorbed throughout the day. So from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is a bitter time of day. It is kind, it is the fire element. So it is very directional, kind of there's an, if you think of fire, it moves up. The energy is upward. It is um, spiky, it is heating, it is spicy. So that is kind of the energy is very much an upward movement. When we look at say from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. or 2 to 6, it doesn't really matter, that is what we call in Ayurveda the Vata time of day. It is, I wonder if um, I turn the lights down a little, you can see a bit better, maybe that's a bit better. Um, you can always throw in the chat if that's not working, um, if you can't see too clearly. Vata is the air and ether element. And here the energy is kind of like very mobile. It moves in all directions and it's, it's light. It's, um, what do we want to say, uh, kind of versatile. It's a lovely time of day to be very, very creative because that's when we get like a lot of thoughts into us, um, kind of spontaneity. It's a lovely time to do thinking, project planning, um, to do art projects. Um, that right of time of day where the, the energy is, is light and very uh, volatile. I think that's the word I want to do. It just moves in all directions. Cool. And then pretty much from 6 till 10, if it's 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. or 6 a.m. till 10 p.m., it is what we call the kapha time of day and kapha is the elements of earth and water it is a lot heavier there's a downward movement so the energy is definitely down and grounding and there's a sense of heaviness so how so pretty much just to recap from 10 a.m till 2 p.m is when the sun is the highest, it's your pitta time of day, it's fire, it's when you want to be eating your biggest meal because it gives you the, the ability to digest the quickest or the most. Between 2 and 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. is the vata time of day, the air and ether, it's the lovely, creative, gentle, soft time. You'll also find, or what I find, is that in this time of day, probably maybe around between 3 and 4, if I haven't had a proper meal, I end up, let me just add, um, sorry, it's here. I end up finding that I need to snack. And you might find that you, that happens a lot with you too. You kind of have like a, a bit of a dip in your energy and you find that, you know, you want to quickly snack on a, I don't know, <laughs> Oh, what was I used to snacking on? Nuts and fruit and probably muffins in the past and cake and chocolates, anything to kind of give me a bit of energy and aliveness. And that's because um, the, especially with your brain, your mind is, is active in all directions and it's quite, um, quite exhausting. So as soon as we eat, eating is such a, a grounding, nourishing and um, nurturing thing. We often find that in the Vata phases time, we, we need to we bring in more, more of that grounding element and we often eat and snack, which is not a great thing to do. And then between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. is your kapha time, where it is that downwards um, movement. It's a grounding energy. It's very kind of cohesive. It's the time where you want to be with your family, it's where you want to slow things down, you want to be very nurturing to yourself um, and to others. And 
this is the energy you want to use to help get you to bed and to help get you to sleep. Because what happens is if at 10 p.m. to now 2 a.m., if you're moving your evening and you're only going to sleep, say, after 10 p.m., you're moving back into the pitta time of day. So now it's not kind of, there's no sun out in the sky to digest your food. And what you actually want to be doing at this time is for all the activities, the thoughts, your experiences from the day, you want to be able to, your body to digest those subconsciously while you're sleeping. When we start to creep um, activity into this time of day, we don't have the ability to digest our experiences of the day. If we do it once in a while, it's not a problem. So if we know we're going to be out at a party or a wedding or we've got a project to, to finish off, it's fine. The problem comes in when we start creeping into going to bed at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock more regularly, that you then miss giving your body that chance to, to digest on an energetic level. Also, what happens is, and we've all experienced it, is that because this pitta energy is really upward, you all often get your second wind. <laughs> and there's a lovely time, like I was saying, where you can quickly finish off essays and projects and do work. Once in a while, fine, but regularly, not fabulous. And then from 2 a.m. till 6 a.m., we're back in our vata time, which again is this really soft, but very mobile time of day. And you'll often find that if you haven't actually gotten into your deep sleep before 2 a.m., if you haven't fallen asleep and kind of you're deep in it, that it's very, very easy to wake up. And this is often where people will wake up between kind of 2 and 4 a.m. And you probably know what I mean if you're one of those. And you wake up because you're in this very light, mobile, energetic state. And that's why I've given you that breathing practice, because when you're in the state, you need something that is calming, soothing, and grounding to get you back to sleep. Um, what is also really nice is with this energy, you want to use it to wake up in the morning. You want to get up just before six o'clock because the energy is already light. It's already helping you to get your day going. If you're sleeping until seven, eight, nine o'clock, you're waking up in the cup of time day where the energy is down and grounding and it's heavy and it's heavier to get going. And you'll often find that that's when you need like, you know, a quick cup of coffee, maybe something sugary, a quick cereal to, to get your day going. Um, and then you're obviously perpetuating the, a bad routine for the rest of the day. So having this Ayurvedic clock in mind, and we can get into a lot more depth and detail, but um, we won't be doing that today. I am going to give you those kind of three steps, three things that you should consider looking into doing so that you can fit yourself and your lifestyle more into this way of living. And the one suggestion I have for you is to eat an earlier. If you can't do earlier, try and make it a lighter dinner. So what I invite you to look at to do is see if you can possibly shift. And it doesn't need to be every single day, maybe just um, three or four days a week. See if you can shift your biggest meal to lunchtime and then see if you can have a lighter dinner. So a lighter dinner, what I like to do is to have like a soup or a little stew and summer a salad can be quite nice. You want it to be light but you want it to be heavy enough that it can get you through the evening sleeping through the night until you break your fast and have your breakfast in the morning. So you need to just play around a little with that, see what you would need um, to sustain you and get you through the whole night. 
So you want to have an earlier, lighter dinner. Um, in Ayurveda, ideally you want to try and finish eating by 6 p.m. But if you're only eating dinner at, at 8 p.m., maybe just see if you can bring that back by 15 minutes or half an hour um, each week so that in two months' time, you're down to about 6.37, kind of finishing by 7 p.m. Um, and that also means no snacking after dinner, which was a big lesson for me to learn. Once I've had my dinner, that's it. No more food coming into the body. So that is tip number one, earlier lighter dinner. Tip number two, <laughs> you probably know what's coming. Um, it's early to bed. You want to use this kapha energy, this downward energy, to help you get to sleep, which means that you want to maybe start, if you are going to bed late, getting yourself into bed by about 9.45, so that you can literally have lights out by 10. That's kind of the ideal state you want to get to. Um, living on the farm, I can admit that literally Craig and me, we are in a bed at about half past eight, nine o'clock, lights out most nights. Um, but then we're also up at about half past four, five o'clock in the morning, which I know isn't <laughs> enjoyable for a lot of people, but living on a farm, it works just perfectly for us. So ideally 10 p.m. Again, not easy. If you're someone who's going to bed at 12 o'clock or, or one o'clock, to do a big jump back and be in bed by 10 o'clock is impossible. And you're going to get frustrated with yourself because you're going to try it and you're going to fail. So all I would suggest for you is if you want to start working in getting to bed earlier, is to just bring your bed time back 15 minutes a week. So if you're going to bed at one o'clock, then for the next week, see if you can go to bed at 12.45. Then for the following week, 12.30, then the week after that, 12.15. And then in a month's time, you should be going to bed at 12. And then the following month, you should be able to get yourself to 11. And then by the third month, you should hopefully be able to bring yourself to 10 o'clock. And then you just sleep and you sleep through and you see what time you wake up. If you're able to wake up between five and six, that's great. Then you know that you're getting um, all the sleep you need, good enough sleep. If not, you might have to bring this back even more and go to bed at nine o'clock. Um, so that is something to play with. Tip one, early allowed to dinner. Tip two, early to bed. Tip three I have for you is going to be start your day right. And start your day right, much to my mother's dismay, I'm sure, is not starting off with a cup of coffee and a peanut butter rice cake in the morning. Start your day right literally entails three things. You want to hydrate, you want to eliminate, and you want to move your body. Thereafter, <laughs> you can have your coffee, you can have your tea, you can have your rust, you can do whatever you want. But you want to start your day right. When you start your day right, and you start it kind of in this vata time, you hydrate, if that's a mug or two of warm water, so hydrating just water, room temperature water, I like to boil it and do half half so it's a little warmer, especially in winter. You then go sit on the toilet, eliminate, make sure you've got a nice um, bowel movement, and then move, be it five minutes, 20 minutes, um, but get your body moving and active and feeling light and spacious. So those are my three tips. And hopefully by seeing that Ayurvedic clock, that makes a bit of sense as to, to why it is so important. Um, early light to dinner, early to bed, start your day right. Hydrate, eliminate, move. <laughs> yep. All right. I think I've covered everything. Let me have a quick check. Oh, okay. And then I also have a nice little tip for you. In this cup of time of day, night, so like at this time of night, 
um, when things you'll probably find it's like a little moist there's a little bit of heaviness it's kind of cohesive it's a nice time to be with the family this is where you want to be doing something nice for yourself so if that is giving yourself a nice bubble bath if it's um, doing a self massage maybe massaging your feet sometimes we'll sit on the couch and we'll massage each other's feet it's just a time where you want to connect connect with yourself connect with your family um, and and slow things down so that was just a nice little tip that I had for you um, all right I'm going to I'm sure you have some questions and we'll get to those but I think what I would like to do first is a quick little visualization so my kind of like third little promise to you was a, a little yoga nidra it is one of my favorite practices everyone knows that as well um so you are now all invited to come and lie on your backs again and if you are on a couch you can sit comfortably otherwise go lie on your bed if you do if you're on your bed and you're going to fall asleep with this relaxation awesome cool don't worry i'll send you the recording afterwards um, but you can be on your mat, you can be on your couch, you can be on your bed anywhere you want. You're going to start off by closing your eyes. You need to take a couple of deep breaths. And you're going to allow your being to settle. Take your awareness down to the soles of your feet. And allow your feet and your legs to relax. With each exhalation, feel your feet and your legs relax. And if you feel that you need to shake or wiggle them a little, go ahead. If you feel you need to bend your knees and have your feet flat on the mat, do so. Adjust the feet and the legs so that they're comfortable. Breathe into the hips and the pelvis and relax the hips and the pelvis. Breathe in up the full length of your spine and relax your spine, your back and your chest. Relax the abdomen, torso soft. Take your breath down or cross your shoulders down, your arms to your hands and your fingers and relax them. Take the breath into the throat and the neck and soften the throat, the neck and the face. Inhale into your whole body, your whole being and as you exhale allow your whole body to relax and to be at ease. Inhale into your whole body. And as you exhale, allow your whole body to relax. Okay. Take your attention to your third eye center. And just breathe into that space. Feeling that expansive, quiet, still space, that space of possibility. And we've covered quite a few things this evening. The one to breathing practice, the Ayurvedic clock. And We'll run through a few reminders in this visualization so that you know that they're ingrained in your subconscious, so that you know that they're there. And what I'd like you to do is on a scale of one to 10, one being not so much and 10 being 100% absolutely, give yourself a rating. And we'll start with the breathing practice, the one to two breathing practice. Do you know about it? Have you been doing it? Do you do it? On a scale from 1 to 10, where would you position yourself? And just see that number appearing in your third eye center. If it's 
something that's quite new or you haven't really been practicing, it might be low on the scale. If it's something you know of and do regularly, it might be high on the scale. If it's something you know of but haven't been doing regularly, it might be halfway. And then do the same for an earlier, lighter dinner. Give yourself a rating from 1 to 10. Are you able to do an earlier, lighter dinner most of the time, all of the time, hardly ever? Just see that number appear. And then let it go. Do the same with earlier to bed. Is it something that you're doing regularly, sometimes, all the time? See a number appear. On that scale of 1 to 10, how are you doing with earlier to bed? And then let it disappear. And then lastly, do the same with starting your day right. How many of you are waking up, hydrating, eliminating and moving your body before anything else, before having that coffee? See a number appear. Is it on the low side, on the high side? And then just let it go, let that number disappear. And then in that third eye space, I'd like you to visualize how you would feel after a perfect night's sleep. How would you feel the next day? Would you feel more energetic? Would you feel vibrant? Would you feel alive? Do you feel more confident? See yourself doing things. See yourself in that space. If you find it difficult to visualize and just feel the words that come to you. And let that feeling, let that sensation sink in. Know that you can actually feel that most of the day. Now just think of really one small action step that you can take. Be it one little small action step for an earlier light at dinner, or a little action step for earlier to bed. It might be this week that you want to just massage your feet before going to bed, maybe bringing back your bedtime by 15 minutes. Or do you find that start your day right, you want to maybe work a little on that? Just choose one. Excellent. And then again, see yourself after having had a good night's sleep in that vibrant, happy, alive state where you're doing the things you want to do, you're exercising, you're playing with the family, your kids, your grandkids, you've got time and energy for work, whatever it is you see you need to improve or you want to see yourself doing. And then just release that image or those images, let it go. I know that deep sleep, deep rest is always with you. It's just tuning in to the rhythm, the cycle of nature, the rhythm of nature. Lovely. And then draw your attention to your heart center, moving from the third eye center down to your heart space. Take a few more deep breaths into that space, noticing the rise and the fall of your chest now. 
Allow the thumbs to move along your fingertips, waking up your hands and wiggle your toes, waking up your feet. When you're ready, you can stretch your arms out and yawning if you want to. Stretching diagonally through the body, right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg, arms one way, legs the other, take a nice deep breath in and then let it go. Super. When you're ready, hug your knees to your chest, give them a good squeeze. If you need to rock a little from side to side, go ahead and do so. And if you just want to roll onto your right side and stay there for a little while, you can do that. If you feel that you want to come up and move back to the screen, you can do that. But you are welcome to just stay lying on your mat. You, <laughs> you don't have to come up. Um, but when you are ready, you can do so. Lovely. All right, so well then everyone, that was pretty much the the basis of, of the talk and, and what um, we were covering this evening. So just to remind you of that one, two breathing practice, the Ayurvedic clock and working and looking and seeing if how we can be more in kind of in tune and in rhythm with, with nature. Um, seeing which out of those three, earlier light at dinner, early to bed, or start your day right, is maybe something you would like to focus on. Don't do all of them. Just choose choose one um, and make it simple and make it fun. Don't make it something that's going to be exhausting and tiring. And then, um, as I promised, here is a, in the little chat, a yoga nidra practice for you to take home with. So. Um, you can, um, it should, you should be able to access it easily. I hope you're able to download it. Um, whoopsie, let me have a show me. Uh, what that is, is if you really do struggle to fall asleep, that yoga nidra practice is lovely to play while, to, to help you get to sleep, in other words. Um, what it is, it's about me doing a 10 minute yoga nidra like we were doing now. And then the music just continues for another 20 minutes and then it drifts off so that I actually don't wake you up <laughs> afterwards, but you actually just keep um, keep getting to hopefully continue sleeping um, and it should just switch itself off then. So that is that. Um, and then what I was going to say is for those who are interested for, for my course that I'm doing, I'm doing six little um, laser coaching sessions. They're 15 minutes and they're totally free. So if anyone wants to have a, like, a look at some of these things in just a bit more detail and how you can maybe incorporate that into your current lifestyle and what you're needing, um, I think I've created, um, I think Tuesday, I think Monday and Tuesday, I've got some slots open. So I've popped another link here. So anyone who does want to, um, you can just um, book your, your session online. Um, if literally just put it straight in my calendar. So I know um, uh, not to stress Charmaine, um, I'll send you the recording, don't stress. But anyone, so, yeah, if anyone does want to just book a little 15 minute session with me so that I can practice um, and maybe give you some more insight as well, then you're welcome to do that. Again, I'm not going to sell you anything. This is just part of the practical stuff I need to practice for my course. Um, and I'd love to get to know some of um, the new faces and to see how um, the see how this Ayurvedic work can possibly help you. So that is that. I know it is just on a seven o'clock, bang on seven o'clock. So for those who have to go and need to dash, you're welcome to do that. Thank you so much for being here. For those who do have one or two questions and would um, like me to answer them, I I'm happy to stay on for another five or 10 minutes and I'm happy to answer any questions. But 
for those who do need to go, um, I do understand. And again, thank you so much for being here. If you do have a question, you can just wave at the screen or you can unmute yourself and you can ask. Um, otherwise, I'll happily catch up with anyone in that laser coaching session. Are you welcome, Harriet? More than welcome. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're feeling um, <laughs> relaxed, Rosia. Great. Okay. Not to stress your men, I'll, I'll try and um, get the recording up on YouTube shortly. So just trying to think if there is anything else I can share with you. But if there are um, no questions, maybe there are even some insights. They don't even have to be, um, it doesn't even have to be a question. Maybe if anyone just wants to share something that they've, taken away from today or learned or might want to implement, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe one or two, if you can just say something that you maybe would consider implementing. Who's going, Manya, do you want to, I, can I, I can ask her. Thank you. No, I, 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 wrote, I typed it as well. Thank you very much for lovely um, talk. What about, can you say something quick about sleeping positions? Sleeping positions. Um, yes, <laughs> there are lots. <laughs> um, generally, when it comes to Ayurveda, and there might be someone who knows a bit more, and if you, if you do know more, for those of you who are yoga, I see my yoga friends are here, you can always add some, something into the chat if you want to. Um, I find lying on my right side um, very comfortable in yoga. We say that we've got kind of the sun and the moon, so the right side being um, uh, Pingla, the sun, Ida being the moon. So if you lie on your right side, you're allowing your left side, which is the feminine side, to be more open and receptive. And the feminine side is the cooling, the calming, the relaxing. So in uh, yoga and Ayurveda, we generally want to be lying if it's comfortable on the right side and I always place a pillow between my knees so that my hips are comfortably aligned and one thing that I've picked up as well and for me is that I'm like a, a, a cold person I like to like go into my little cocoon at night and I think a lot of people are like that as well because it's just such a lovely safe and comfortable space to be in but I found if I actually try and um, lift my head and not the sense of, of using more pillows but just that I'm, I'm not tucking my chin in so much and curling up that I actually try and lengthen more of my neck that I then don't wake up in the morning with so much neck tension and tightness um, and I've been doing that for a few years now and it makes made it's made quite a big difference I used to suffer from quite a few neck issues and I think it, it was like from years and years and years of just being in this tight little ball, especially in winter. Winter, it's really hard to to kind of sleep with a long neck. But um, but I have been been trying that. So um, yeah, maybe give something like that a try. Cool, you're welcome. All right, anyone else with a little bit of um, any insight, any questions before I dash up? Oh, Jody. I see your hands raised. That's cool. <laughs> I've only seen that one can raise a hand like that now. Awesome. Go ahead. You'll have to unmute yourself, I think, JD. I don't think I can unmute you. Unless you want to type it in the chat. Right, unless there was no question and <laughs> you were also just playing around with the, with the um, pieces. Cool. All righty, everyone. Well, I hope that's given you some um, good kind of practical tips to play with this evening and this week. And hopefully um, I can catch up with some of you guys next week sometime. So thank you all so much for being here. 
have a lovely, lovely evening. This was my first talk. Yay. <laughs> so I hope it went all right. Thank you for being very patient with me. I really do appreciate it. And sending you all lots and lots of love and um, <laughs> fairy dust and good sleep. <laughs> I'll, um, what can I do? We can, I, can, I can unmute you all and then you can all say goodbye. Cheers, guys.